So, hello guys, and welcome to the video. Today I'm here to present you a, uh, well, not this thing, this is just a static reverser, but a, uh, what I like to call a vertical bidirectional engine reverser and bidirectional shifter. Um, yeah, that sounds like a lot, but we'll get through it through this video. Um, this one will probably focus less on, like, teaching stuff, more, sh I guess, showing stuff than the last one. Uh, also, I must say that I never really plan to do a slamstone series or anything. For now, this is kind of the what uh, I'm gonna show, I think, because uh, there are some other parts of the project which I could show, but yeah, it would uh, be a, well, I would be probably spoiling too much about the project. Uh, now, anyway, what I just saw there is, uh, yeah, the engine. Um, go, uh, I reverse the engine using the static reverser down there. That's a very, a very basic thing. I'm not gonna get into it. It's just you can build it yourself. You're losing the stuff I thought last week, but um, what you saw there was uh, the actual machine we're going to be talking about, which um, not only reversed that engine, but it's also bidirectionally mobile itself, bidirectional vertical, so or vertical bidirectional, whatever you want to call it. So the whole machine itself can also be moved um, up and down, and the thing is that's actually what it does. Um, it, that's why I call it a bidirectional shifter. It's because, well, the engine is vertical, so you can assume it's always sort of shifting vertically. But as you can see right there, every time the engine hits it, uh, it goes one block up. It can manages to trigger itself and then put itself on up. But that's not that's not even it. There's more to this. Um, I can also do it down. <laughs> so yeah, it's bidirectional. And it, now I just reverse the engines. Oh yeah, by the way, in case you notice by now, I'm having trouble with my audio on my computer. Uh, since Ubuntu update and stuff, uh, I'm not going to go ahead too deep into it, but I'll try to fix it, or rather, try to get my brother to help. But yeah, I'm doing post commentary on this, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to try to keep up. But yeah, to get back to the video, um, yeah, also you can trigger the engine yourself to move the thing, uh, but it also gets triggered whenever you actually, yeah, have an engine go into it. So this thing took uh, about five days to design. <laughs> well, not this one, but um, the entire concept of having a machine which actually moves itself one down or up whenever something runs into it. In fact, I wasn't even sure it was going to be possible for a while. See, so yeah, I'm really happy I managed to get uh, to this compact result in the end. They also, I just activated the uh, automatic reversal mode right there. So now every time the engine go comes down, it will be automatically reversed and sent back up. Um, so yeah, this machine is, took me a long time to build, uh, about five days. First two days were spent on building another one, but I looked at it and I was like, nah, we need something better than this, and then I started trying to mess with that, but I'll show that other one in a second. So yeah, as you can see right here, uh, the thing, you can basically use it to, uh, well, if you want to do some kind of operation at some level, and it has to be one level lower or higher every time you do it, then this would be a good way to do it, I think. So, that's also the kind of... I guess, without spoiling too much, that's kind of what I needed it for, at least. So, yeah, uh, this thing, I guess it's not too useful to most people, but I just really wanted to show it, because I spent a lot of time on it, and I th it looks like most people find it cool when I post it on Twitter, although I didn't really know what it did. And I definitely find it cool myself, so yeah, that's the main reason I'm just putting it out here. Uh, there will also be a schematic down link in the description, because, of course, I won't be able to be getting into this. And I'm really wondering what I was talking about during the recording right here, <laughs> because I'm pausing a lot. Oh yeah, I was actually talking during the recording. I knew I wasn't recording, but but I, I was talking just to kind of get the time right to yeah keep things realistic. So yeah, now I'm going to show the old one I built in the first one or two days, I believe. Um, so yeah, this does um, the same function, or, well, part of the function. It's the uh, first function, just reversing the engine, it does flawlessly, as far as I am aware. Uh, so yeah, it moves two lesson blocks from those positions to, well, positions I'm gonna start at right here. Although there's a bit of a problem with one, because, yeah, uh, normally that you have an engine in there, and I'm quickly gonna show what that looks like. Yeah, like that. Uh, and basically, whenever you push the redstone block in position right there, then uh, that piston will actually push it straight down already, so you don't it doesn't get pulled back by the slam block. So that works normally. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, however, this thing relied a lot on butts, uh, as I will show in a second. And 
that was a big issue with it. Also, this thing, I worked on making it bidirectional. Um, I think it is vertically bidirectional, but I am not gonna dust it in this video in case it isn't and the thing would break. And yeah, so. Uh, but I didn't even attach an engine to it, and neither did I actually get the shifting mechanic attached because that was actually quite hard getting a circular mechanic. So every time you do it, it does something. Uh, yeah, you bit. Okay, be back. All right, I'm back, and yeah. So let's get back to the video. Uh, so yeah, what I'm showing right here is how yeah this thing is basically entirely based on butts, and right there you've got a flip flop for example. Uh, the piston leaves the yeah the uh, little structure up there whenever it uh, well it, uh, gets triggered. Uh, and yeah, so as you can see, it's quite complex. There's the lots of butts, which uh, work reliably, you could say. But they start getting quite annoying once you start doing, once you start moving them. So that's what I'm showing right here. Uh, so yeah, I've got a, you've got a simple butt right here. Uh, and if you place pistons to move it up and down, that's all fine and dandy. But once you actually start to try to push it at least, so then stuff will start happening. So yeah, until here I'm just building a simple uh, butt engine. I think I talked about this one in like the last video or something. So yeah, you can watch that if it gets you interested. And yeah, as you can see, um, everything would have went all right, but yeah, the butt started pushing stuff around, and the pist all the piston made it even worse. So yeah, it it was really wasn't good. And yeah, that's an issue, of course. So um, yeah, uh, that's something which needs to be dealt with in most situations. Uh, right here, you've got a block which blocks that butt from actually doing something, but only if it gets pushed up. And that only works either of, as well, of course, if that block is still there while you're pushing. So it has to be pushed up itself later on. And for down, I think it just works because of, I don't know, direction, uh, uh, update order or something. So yeah, that's kind of annoying, but it works, but it's definitely annoying. And I really wanted something better. So yeah, for the design, other design, I spent a couple days on this one. Uh, just started from scratch again, uh, same function, but uh, I tried my best to keep things simple while not using any butts because they were really hard to move. Uh, and right here, uh, oh yeah, I'm just showing the fact that actually I did make this one to be bidirectional, so I, it's all of the uh, stuff which normally should be able to push it, but I didn't test it because it may not be, and I'm not, I wasn't entirely sure and I didn't want to break it either, so yeah. Uh, but this thing, as you could see earlier, of course, is bidirectional. Uh, so yeah. Uh, now this left section you see right here is oh well, I just I think um, specified. There's a shifting uh, and the engine and that kind of stuff, and the right part uh, basically handles the actual reversing. Uh, the right part is what I built first, by the way, and the left part is basically uh, the right part is basically doing the same stuff as the big machine I just showed a second ago. And the left part is something I added to it once I saw this thing was actually like working really well and I could probably use it uh, as a final design. So yeah. Um, and right here I'm showing how it actually the trigger works. So you've got basically this piston chain, this one pushing, powering that one, powering that one and so on. Uh, so to make sure that the other piston only powers like a couple of pushes after the first one. Uh, to make sure that the, engine, uh, that the bottom piston got some time to push. And that way, when you, once you push the, right, oh, the the top part some block in, then it will basically work without any effort. And also, yeah, I'm just uh, showing here that uh, the thing which shifts the whole machine is that this piston, because it uh, there's a redstone block to the right of it, as uh, showed a bit earlier, which uh, gets pushed it next to it whenever the reversing happens. And it's got these two points, which basically hits um, the two engines. Uh, because this is a butt engine and not a, like one which separates itself, like I showed last time. Uh, all of the both engines are on the same side, so you can just use uh, trigger both of them. So in either setting, uh, one of the engines will be against next to one of these, you could say, pressure points. Uh, so yeah, that's working. Uh, now over here, I've got a simple expander. As you can see, I went to the minimal case of having two components in between. Here we have three components in between. Middle one isn't used, and from there on, basically we we already controlled the entire machine, which is pretty fast, I would say. I I personally also thought I would need a bit more expanders to do that, but 
Apparently it's possible like this. But uh, yeah, as you can see right here, that's a, a component which uh, reaches the 12 block limit. There's tons of components here uh, with 12 blocks, so yeah. Uh, also, right here, I'm not... Uh, so yeah, something I think I'm explaining right here is how... Um, yeah, basically once you're, when you're benching out like this, something important to take in mind is the fact that every component only needs to be pushed by one mechan uh, mechanism. Uh, over here, I actually have two pistons, so I'm not sure if I didn't overdo this one. I may check it later on, not in this video though. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, for example, here you've got a component. It can get it gets pushed once itself up by from the bottom and once uh, down from another point. Also in a second, but it it itself pushes three parts up. That's the main part, the key part. It pushes three stuff, three things up, but there's only one piston uh, uh, which was just up there, I think. Yeah, I didn't show it properly, but you can see it like it's kind of on the screen, uh, which pushes it down whenever it gets pushed down. And that's enough actually to get our component moving, so that's pretty cool. And you should definitely keep that in mind if you want to build stuff like this yourself, because if you were to actually uh, add a mechanism like that to every bench, it's lots of useless blocks, and you won't be able to build much without constantly hitting the block limits and having to redesign stuff. So yeah, I wouldn't even have a clue what I'm talking about right here. I think I'm just talking about that, you know, it's, I found a pretty cool machine and uh, yeah, I just thought about sharing. Um, even though I doubt any of you will find use for it. But I, oh yeah, oh, there's this one person right here I'm showing. Um, this is basically what makes it di design directional, unfortunately. And I gotta go again, be right back. Alright, we're back, and uh, yeah, so let's get through this. Um, the piston I just showed makes this design di directional because there's something right here with that component which makes it exceed the push limit during extension, but once you wait for a bit, it actually uh, is okay again, and as a result, you can, uh, yeah, um, it's okay, but you basically need to obey the piston pushing down to let it know that, hey, actually you can push uh, some stuff moved this time and it's not uh, above 12 blocks anymore. And yeah, because of that, you need that piston there and I haven't really found a way to get rid of it, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that's that, I suppose. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm showing right now, but yeah. So make sure to not just rotate it once you're done with schematic because that won't really work, unfortunately. But yeah, guys, I think that's going to be about it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Uh, I hope you liked the video and the machine. Please be waiting. And I hope I'll see you in another video.